So you want to build a custom Harley and you want to be the cool guy with all the trick parts, custom work, all that stuff. Well, here's a few reasons you should probably rethink that. And I'm speaking from personal experience, not just as a mechanic who's worked on these bikes for, I don't know, the better part of like 10 years at this point. Now. Um, here's something that you need to consider. And I tell this to everyone who wants to start modifying their bike and wants to go like full build. Honestly, this doesn't really apply to bolt-on stuff. This applies to like full build, custom, like real deal one-off stuff or, you know, very seldomly done stuff. Custom bikes have custom problems. Custom problems means that when you're stuck stranded somewhere and because you just want to ride your bike or you break down or something happens and you jump, all you want to do is ride your bike and you're stuck there's a slim chance that you're finding the stuff that you need aside from spark plugs or fuel line somewhere local now don't get me wrong this isn't for me to steer you away from building a custom bike by any means i think Harleys are basically like grown, you know, adult Legos. If you still play with Legos right now, yo, you're cool. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't judge. All right, if you're playing, if you're rocking Legos, dude, by all means. But I'll tell you this: every custom bike I've ever built and worked on, when it has problems, it normally involves someone picking you up with a trailer, and that's a bummer, dude. It really is. It becomes a huge an issue and it'll ruin your day weekend night all that stuff real quick which can be annoying especially in the scenarios where like you want to ride to daytona or you want to ride to sturgis all right you gotta have uh You gotta have some willingness to, uh, I don't know, to toe the line a little bit, man. Oh, what is that? So, first things first, you do one-off stuff, it comes with a one-off price tag, and it comes with one-off problems. All right, so keep that in mind. Another thing about building like a full on custom bike, you know, you're starting with the frame or you're starting with the basket case. I would highly recommend people stay away from basket cases and just bare frames unless you have really deep pockets or a lot of time, right? Now, most of us, we don't want to wait two, three, four, five, six, seven years to get on our bikes man all right we don't want to we want to we want to throw some parts at it throw some money and some time at it and get on that damn thing this weekend you know and uh problem lies with that solely in the fact of this is really expensive stuff even if you go like japanese route you go you know basket case metric cruiser you're still throwing tons of money at it. I mean, you can try to skimp out as much as you can, but it's eventually just gonna bite you in the ass. And that's what happened to me. So to stay away from basket cases by all means, dude. Like you're just you're just asking to like ruin your time if you buy a basket case. Take it from me, this bike was just a frame and a box of parts. Two boxes of parts actually. Dude, it was a nightmare. I mean, it really was. And it still kind of is. <laughs> I love the bike, but sometimes you just can't win them all, right? Sometimes you're just at the mercy of the beast. Number three. All right, the reason you should probably stay away from custom bikes or at least building your own is experience. Now, I will tell you, the best way to learn to do something is by doing it, but motorcycles are already inherently dangerous. Doing the work, all right? Everyone thinks, oh, it's just nuts and bolts. I'll watch a YouTube video on it, and that's fine. I make YouTube videos about building bikes i make youtube videos about doing exactly what i'm talking about right now all right 
the key problem is the fact that if you are not mechanically inclined you probably shouldn't be starting from scratch i you know change your levers change your brakes do your maintenance stuff on a bike that runs and rides first and do it per the manufacturer's recommended specs and the book and all that stuff and you know what you'll learn something and you'll learn every time you do something like that because that's what happens is you get experience you gain experience you gain the knowledge you get you know better at the craft of working on motorcycles and it really is a craft uh, i'm not downshifting for shit today it's almost like i don't remember how to ride a bike you should get your chops up on something that you can already enjoy all right and i love building motorcycles i really do i really enjoy it but you know what's not enjoyable not being able to ride the damn thing for like a four years while you wait to finish up all your projects you know that's not enjoyable at all by any means i think i'm melting my boot onto this exhaust all right so if you want a custom bike you want to do custom stuff by all means But if you want to ride a motorcycle, probably start with a currently operational bike. Uh, that's, that's just my opinion. That's my prerogative. As always, if you guys gained any information or you learned something or made you think a little bit, dude, by all means, please let me know in the comments below. If you like what you're seeing, if you like where uh, what I'm doing, where I'm taking the channel, let me know by subscribing, liking, and commenting. And as always, ride safe, ride smart. Have a great day. Catch you in the next one. Peace.